Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin and today we're going to be doing a bit different of a showdown. We're going to be putting up Sapphire's R9290 Vapor X, which I have in my system right now, up against Gigabyte's GTX 780 Ti WinForce. Now there's quite a few differences between these cards and obviously there's a big difference in things like price and um, you know, overall performance. If you know anything about um, GPUs, you'll probably know that there's a big difference of power between these two. But I was just, you know, wanted to do this to show you guys the difference of power between these two cards. So if you were deciding out of the two, um, just so you can make a more informed decision from that. Now, I am wearing a pair of gunners, and uh, this is a bit of, you know, an inside to a future video I'm going to be doing. So I thought I'd wear them today. Um, as I've been testing them out quite a bit. Now, the differences between these two cards. So, they're obviously running completely different uh, GPUs. Obviously, the GTX 780 Ti uses NVIDIA's GK110 chip. Uh, this is fully fledged, the one you found, find in the uh, 780 and the Titan and things like that. Whereas the 290 runs the Hawaii GPU, which you would find in uh, the 290X or so. Um, but it's a more cut down version, slightly, um, a lot of people say, you know, 5 to 10% cut down uh, version of the 290X uh, GPU that you find in the 290. Um, now, not only is there, are there different uh, CPUs, they're um, clocked at pretty vastly different speeds. So, the Gigabyte WinForce um, with NVIDIA's GPU Boost 2.0, and I'm not going to get into all the features between the two cards because that's just huge, and um, there's obviously, you can go on the websites and look through all the features list, but one that you need to know about is GPU Boost 2.0, which is featured on the uh, NVIDIA cards, some of them, and uh, what that does is it will boost up the GPU faster than what it actually says. So the WinForce boosts it all the way up to 1150 megahertz, even though it's rated to only boost up to uh, 1085 megahertz. So big, big um, jump up there from where it's actually rated. Whereas the uh, VaporX 290 will run at what it says it is because it doesn't have anything like that, which is uh, 1030 megahertz. So the uh, the WinForce is running at a quite a bit higher a clock speed. Now there's also a difference in memory. So the 780 Ti runs uh, three gigabytes of GDDR5. We compare that to the four gigabytes we find on the 290. So the 290's got a gigabyte more. Uh, the 780 Ti's memory is running quite a bit faster. That's at 7,000 megahertz, which is that's really honking. Um, but that is only on a 384-bit memory bus. We compare that to the 512-bit memory bus of the R9 290 VaporX, which is running. Uh, its memory is running at 5,600 megahertz. So, you know, big difference there in terms of memory speed, but also memory size. A lot of people criticize the 780 Ti these days and uh, say that its, uh, it's memory is not enough. I, I disagree with that somewhat. Um, a lot of the people out there making those claims have a bit of a skewed perception on how much uh, video memory you actually need. I've done testing actually with the WinForce uh, 780 Ti uh, doing some 4K benchmarks and that and uh, although I never saw it actually hit the 3 gigabytes it was it was getting up there so I can see why um, some people would recommend you going with the 290 and higher resolution applications just because of the 4 gigabytes or 290X as well the 4 gigabytes over the 3 gigabytes but honestly uh, in my testing, it never actually ran out um, of video memory, but it was getting a bit close. So I guess it's maybe the more future-proof thing to do. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what you think in high-resolution setups. Um, is the three gigabytes of a 780 Ti enough, or do you really think you need four gigabytes, or how much memory do you actually think you need? Be interesting to see what you guys think. Anyways, um, now onto the coolers. So obviously different. The WinForce has the uh, classic. Uh, <laughs> WinForce cooler on it that's been around for a long time. It features their uh, triangle cool technology on it, which is just a kind of different uh, heat sink shape uh, in the form of a triangle, and that's to help heat dissipation, but they also say it reduces air turbulence, which means there's less noise. Um, but it's pretty standard, it's been around for quite a while. Whereas the cooler on the VaporX is uh, pretty much, it's very similar to the Tri-X 290 cooler. 
Um, very similar how it looks. The fans are identical. Uh, however, the VaporX uh, has its vapor chamber technology, which is quite complicated to explain. But it's just basically a, a vast improvement in terms of uh, heat sink and uh, heat pipe design over uh, the Tri-X. But essentially, aside from uh, the heat sink change, in terms of the coolers, they are very similar uh, in terms of the fan and the overall structure of the card. Although the VaporX does have a backplate and other additional features that the Tri-X does not have. Now, size-wise, these are both pretty big cards. The uh, VaporX is coming in at 305 millimeters long to the 292 millimeters long of the Windforce 780 Ti. Uh, the VaporX is coming in at... Did I say VaporX or Tri-X just for? If I go around the wrong way, it's so many... Um, in 290s I've tested. Uh, the VaporX uh, comes in 114 millimeters wide to the uh, 129 millimeters wide of the uh, 780 Ti and the VaporX is slightly taller at 47 millimeters high compared to the 43 millimeters high of the Windforce 780 Ti. So let's get into the benchmarks then. Up first is uh, Fermark. Now I run this at 1080p, 4 times MSA, and it runs for 15 minutes, full screen. Now, the R9-290 VaporX from Sapphire scored an average of 37 frames per second. The Windforce GDX 780 Ti from Gigabyte scored an average of 57 frames per second average. That is just a huge difference. 20 frames of Fermark is phenomenal. Uh, but we'll carry on. Now, Unigen Valley, this is uh, on the Extreme HD preset. The Vapor X scored an average of 61.4 frames a second. The Windforce GDX 780Ti scored 74.7 frames a second average. So, another big jump there in favor of the 780Ti. Now, Unigen Heaven, this is DirectX 11. Uh, everything maxed out 1080p. The R9-290 VaporX from Sapphire scored an average of 54.3 frames per second, whereas the GDX 780 Ti Windforce scored an average of 66 frames per second. So, 12 frames there uh, in favor of the uh, 780 Ti. Now, Heaven again, this is uh, OpenGL, once again, everything uh, maxed out, 1080p. The R9-290 VaporX scored 38.7 frames per second, whereas the Windforce 780 Ti scored 60.8 frames per second average. So, another big jump up. Now, onto some games. So, Tomb Raider, this is uh, everything maxed out without V-Sync. The R9-290 VaporX scored 79.7 frames per second, which is very good. The GDX 780Ti Windforce scored 99.2 frames per second average. So, yeah, another uh, 20 frame jump up uh, there for the 780Ti. And lastly, Bioshock Infinite. Now, this is uh, yeah, on user setting uh, 2. The... R9-290 VaporX scored 96.5 frames per second average, whereas the GDX 780 Ti Windforce scored 132 frames per second average. That is huge. So, in terms of the benchmarks, we're seeing... Oh, good. I don't know what the average would be with all the tests. Maybe 15 to 20 frames better on the 780 Ti. This is what I explained to you guys. It's a big, big jump up when you go from a uh, 290 to a 780 Ti. Uh, that GK110 chip is uh, pretty damn powerful. So, with that out of the way, let's get to the temperatures. Now, obviously, these are completely different uh, GPUs, but they uh, both run relatively hot. I mean, a lot of people harp on about R9 290s and 290Xs for being incredibly hot cards, and I'm not denying that, they are incredibly hot, all well, the reference models were anyway. But uh, the 780Ti gets pretty toasty too, it, it has to be said, they um, they do put out a decent amount of heat as well, out of that GK110 chip. Now, in Fermark, the highest temperature I saw the R9290 VaporX go to was 73 degrees Celsius during my 
Fermat testing. So 73 and that was at 42% fan speed. Whereas the Windforce 780 Ti rose to 77 degrees Celsius and that was at 62% fan speed max. So uh, the, the VaporX wins in this in terms of heat uh, even though everyone says the 290s are incredibly hot card. Um, it wins. Now, uh, during the heaven testing, I also took the uh, highest temperature the GPUs went up to, and uh, interestingly, the uh, VaporX went to 70 degrees Celsius during that test, and the 780 Ti went to 69 degrees Celsius, so a bit of a difference there. It's uh, actually better for the wind force, which was quite surprising, but uh, these wind force coolers generally require quite a bit of fan speed. Like uh, with the Fermac testing, it needed to go to 62% fan speed max um, to, you know, and it was holding about there compared to the 42% of the VaporX. So, and that's been a pattern across all the Windforce coolers I've tested. Some of them went up to 90% uh, fan speed during the Fermac testing. So these Windforce coolers generally need quite a bit of fan speed to get uh, things through. And that leads us to noise. So, I'm going to let you judge this one for yourself, like always. So this is what the R9 290 VaporX sounds like at idle. And here we have the Gigabyte Windforce 780Ti at idle. And this is them uh, on loads. This is during the Unigen Valley benchmark, or is that that was a uh, Extreme HD? So up first here is the Vapor X R9290 during that benchmark. And here is the Windforce GTX 780 Ti during the exact same benchmark. So I'll let you decide for yourselves which one wins in noise, like usual. And uh, that's going to lead us to the conclusion. So, uh, which one of these wins in this uh, showdown? Well, it's pretty obvious. And anyone who knew this stuff from the start would have known which one was going to win. The uh, Windforce 780 Ti runs away with it by a country mile. But there is um, a huge difference between these cards in terms of price. Um, sometimes I've seen prices be as... Maybe not with the VaporX, because uh, that's quite expensive as far as 290s go. But uh, with some 290s being half the price uh, with specials and different things than 780 Ti's. Now that is just uh, what I've seen sometimes in New Zealand. Obviously, it always varies in price. But I can pretty much guarantee you that uh, the 780 Ti will be more expensive than the 290, regardless of where you live. So it's that price difference that you need to take into consideration depending on uh, the stores where, where you are. You know, if there's a huge difference between them, then there's no point. They're obviously in two completely different leagues, but if they've got specials, something like that, and the price is actually getting quite close together, then now you'll realize that the uh, 7 ATI is quite a big jump up. Um, however much that might be, the price difference, you're going to have to gauge yourself, you know, is it going to be, is the extra money I'm paying going to be uh, worth it in terms of the extra performance I'm going to get? Um, I mean, the 290 doesn't do bad, and, the, and all the game testing is well above 60 frames per second, which is just fine. And uh, jumping between the two cards in terms of uh, real-world testing, and like carrying on and playing my usual games and things like that, uh, I actually didn't notice any difference jumping between them, but I might not be playing enough demanding games. I was mainly just playing um, Payday 2 with everything maxed out. But yeah, so so the 780 Ti wins, but that's to be expected. But um, the, the 290 puts up a bit of a fight. And that's going to end this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. It gives you a bit of an idea about the difference in performance between these uh, two cars, considering the VaporX is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, R9 290 you can get. And the Gigabyte Windforce is up there in terms of power with the um, 
780 Ti, so they're both both uh, in their respective classes, respective GPUs, I should say, um, very powerful. But yeah, it's still a big victory for the uh, GDX 780 Ti. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, leave a like if you liked it, and I'll catch you guys next time on Tech Show.